Luke and today we're diving down the tube of tunes to break down the trailer for Batman The Long Halloween Parts 1. This is the latest movie in the DC animated original movie line. And this along with Batman The Long Halloween Parts 2 is adapting the comic book storyline Batman The Long Halloween. Now I am aware that the film is already out, it came out earlier this week. In fact I've got it right here, I've not watched it yet, I'm so excited to watch it. And I thought before we do that why don't we break down this trailer this was a video I meant to make a few weeks ago and I kept pushing it back until eventually the film is already out. But I know there's some of you that haven't seen it yet. It is only out on digital in the US. It's not quite out on Blu-ray yet. So if there's any of you that are waiting for the Blu-ray release, this video may still be relevant to you. Now, like I said, I've not seen the film yet, but full disclosure, I have read the comic book. And so I do know what happens in the story. And so when watching this trailer, I do know what a lot of those scenes are referring to. I know what scenes those clips are coming from. I know it all means in the grander sense of the storyline but with my knowledge of the comic book storyline I may be able to help shed some light on exactly what is happening in this trailer but, but don't worry there's going to be no spoilers in this video because this is the trailer breakdown you know most of you haven't seen this film yet you don't know what's going to happen and I'm not going to spoil any of that and before we get started can I ask you to click that like button it really helps out the channel and lets us get seen by so many more people and if you've not done so yet why don't you hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell to be notified the next time we dive down the tube tune. So let's take a look at this trailer. The Long Halloween is a very popular retelling of the Two-Face origin story which I don't think is really a spoiler. That's essentially what this story is. I mean, you see a Batman story with Harvey Dent working a case. It's quite likely that he's going to end up Two-Faced by the end of said story. Even the Dark Knight actually took some cues in terms of their Harvey Dent storyline pulling from The Long Halloween. And it looks like throughout part one, much like throughout the comic book, it sows the seeds for his eventual turn. And that's very clear from the start of this trailer. You can very clearly see that they are setting up Two-Face here. You see Batman and Harvey Dent flipping a coin, waiting to see what the coin will decide for them. Of course, that's very classic Two-Face. You can also see later on in the trailer, the trailer begs the question of hero or villain while splicing in between footage of Harvey Dent as well as Batman as both characters in this storyline walk the edge of crossing over that line into darkness. As well as the character of Harvey can be heard saying once I take them out, meaning once he kills members of Gotham's organised crime. And it looks to me that this film and even just the trailer is really setting up Harvey Dent's downfall and eventual turn into Two-Face. And as we can see here, we see Harvey Dent, James Gordon and the Batman himself, who this trio are at the heart of this story. They are really the main characters. In fact, you could even argue that Harvey Dent and James Gordon were even more so main characters than Batman himself. As a lot of the storyline focuses on James's relationship with his wife Barbara and Harvey's with his wife Gilda as well as getting hints at some of Bruce Wayne's relationship with Selina Kyle. But it is these three who at the beginning of this tale make a vow to take down Carmine Falcone, the kingpin of Gotham City's underworld. And then we see the Joker is on the loose on his killing spree, really spotlighting how Gotham is being flooded with a new wave of criminal. And he appears to be jealous of the holiday killer. It's almost as if the limelight is being taken off of him and being focused on this other super criminal that is really at the heart of this story. We also see that Catwoman is involved somehow. The trailer doesn't really make this clear and to be quite honest the comic doesn't either. Throughout the story you think is she there to help Batman or is she there to get in his way? And I will say the comic itself doesn't really answer what Catwoman is doing and what are her connections to Carmine Falcone and why is she so interested in getting involved with this case. No all of that stuff was later answered in a follow-up comic Catwoman when in Rome. And I'll be intrigued to see whether or not parts one or parts two of this film include some of the storylines in that or just mentions of things just to maybe somewhat wrap up her storyline here. It'll be interesting to see whether or not the film or part two pull anything from that to help wrap up her storyline within this film 
and leave her feeling less like a dangling thread. You would expect a film to have a much more of a complete ending and be less open-ended than the more natural ongoing format of a comic book. So I will be intrigued to see whether or not they make any changes to her storyline or at least hint as to her involvement a little bit more than the comic actually did. Catwoman in this film is being voiced by Naya Rivera, probably best known for playing Santana on Glee in what will be a posthumous performance as she sadly passed away last year. Like I said, I've not seen the film yet, but from the clips and things I'd seen, she sounds great as Catwoman. And judging from previous roles, I imagine she would have been absolutely fantastic. And so it's a little bittersweet because yes, we finally get to see her play the character, but it's sad to think that she'll never be playing this character again. In what is possibly going to be the first of many films in a series, this film does appear to be part of a new DC animated continuity. And while it hasn't actually been confirmed, basing it off the art style, this film does appear to be in continuity with Superman Man of Tomorrow and Justice Society World War II. Both of those films, which are confirmed to be set in the same universe, feature the characters fairly early on in their career, and this film does depict Batman early on in his career, and so it isn't a big leap to think that this film is also in the same continuity, and they will eventually meet up and have a crossover in a future movie. And that's definitely exciting. I'm glad to see that this time around when the constructing a DC animated movie continuity that they're actually starting from the beginning unlike last time when things started a little bit later on in most of the characters timelines this is definitely the way to do it and I'm definitely excited to see what's going to come from the future of this universe and then we hear about the holiday killer who are they well that is the mystery that is at the center of this movie who is the holiday killer as we can see, the Holiday Killer's first victim is killed on Halloween night. Hence the name, The Long Halloween. It's a case that just drags on and on for an entire year in the comic. And the first victim is Johnny Beatty, the nephew of Carmine Falcone. Now the names Johnny Beatty and Carmine Falcone may be familiar if you have seen Batman Year One. Now the Batman The Long Halloween comic book was a somewhat spiritual sequel to the Batman Year One comic. And while this film will not be a direct sequel to the Batman Year One animated film, as I've previously said, I expect it to be part of this new DC animated continuity. All I'll say is it definitely can't hurt to re-watch Batman Year One before you watch this film. If you want to familiarise yourself with some of the characters and the more mob elements of Gotham City, because the comic book is sort of a sequel to Year One, and so this film, which is looking to be fairly comic book accurate, will also follow on from that film nicely. Like I said, they're not two direct sequels, completely different voice cast and art style, but story-wise, I imagine it's gonna work. I and mean, you also see shots of the Calendar Man and Solomon Grundy. The Calendar Man, normally a bit more of a jokey villain, only commits crimes on, you guessed it, holidays, or just special dates on the calendar. Is he the holiday killer? Or is that a little bit too obvious? Well, maybe he can shed some light on who the holiday killer is and help Batman, Gordon and Dent. And Solomon Grundy, born on a Monday, is this sort of mindless zombie that lives in Gotham's sewers. All of which is just adding to the growing number of supervillains on the rise within Gotham City. The city is fallen, Alfred. Then we must endeavour to lift it up again. And there it is, as you can hear, that is a very familiar Alfred to some of us. That is the voice of Alistair Duncan, who you may know as being the voice of Alfred on the Batman TV series. Now I'm going to be honest, that is my Batman show. That is the show I grew up with. And while I love all the other animated Batman shows, that will always be my Batman, my Alfred. And to hear his voice coming out of this Alfred's mouth is just pure nostalgia and is pure the character. He has the right amount of sarcasm, the right amount of guidance in helping Bruce. He just feels like the character to me and I'm very excited to see his return here in this film and the next film and hopefully like I said in a continued continuity. So yeah looking at the trailer it looks to be very comic book accurate. I'm going to be interested to see is there going to be any sort of restructuring coming from this film. I know some of the previous comic book adaptations have featured quite a bit of restructuring simply to make it more cinematic or maybe they've even changed some of the things up and so I'm going to be intrigued to see what exactly they do here. The comic itself was very formatically structured. It was 13 issues long and the first 12 issues all took place on a different holiday each month. I'm going to be intrigued to see 
if the films keep to that exact structure, whether they show any events happening in between said holidays. Also, I'm going to be intrigued to see where is going to be the cut-off point between parts one and parts two. Is it going to be after exactly six issues, after six months, or are they going to find a different point to close off the story that maybe serves as a better cliffhanger? that maybe helps wrap one film up better. Are they gonna have to restructure the storyline at all just to make part one and part two feel slightly more standalone? Obviously there'll still be a parts one and two, but are they gonna have to build towards some sort of climax towards the end of part one just so that it does feel like its own satisfying film, even if it does have a cliffhanger? And if they do, I'm completely fine with that. I'm not saying I'm not. I'm just really intrigued to see what they're going to be doing to adapt this into not just one film, but two films. Because I do think that definitely creates a challenge of its own because you need to create two films that even though I'm, can be viewed as one, you still want them to stand on their own and be satisfying in their own parts. So I think that's pretty much it. I think we broke down pretty much everything from the trailer. I mean, we didn't quite go through it frame by frame. This was not the Space Jam trailer. But at the same time, like I said, I've read the comic. I already know what's happened. And I don't want to start getting into the super spoilery stuff where I'm being like, oh, if you see this symbol in the back of this frame, this means exactly that. And I know that because I've read the comic. We didn't need to get into that. So that's going to be it. If you enjoyed this video, please check out my other trailer breakdowns. I recently did one for Pixar's Luca, as well as the aforementioned Space Jam 2. And speaking of Luca, I've actually got my review for that film coming out next. And I also have my review of Wish Dragon, which I've already filmed and I've just not got around to finish editing. So get ready for both of those. And if you want to find out when those videos are coming out why don't you hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell to be notified the next time we dive down the tube of tunes and if you've not already done so yet please hit that like button it really helps us out and lets the video get seen by so many more people and if you were thinking of buying this on blu-ray i've got a link down below in the description to where you can buy it on amazon both us and uk and full disclosure if you use these links at no extra cost to yourself you actually help out the channel so if you're interested, feel free to check those links out down below. Are you excited for this film? Have you already seen it? Because like I said, it is already out. What are you excited for the most? Or what did you enjoy the most? This is a no spoiler video, so like, please keep it to no spoilers in the comments. And once I've seen this film, like I said, I'm so excited to watch it. My review for this film will also be up shortly. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Thanks for watching Tube of Tunes. If you want more from the channel, hit subscribe. If you want to keep up to date with what's going on, follow us on our socials. Hope you liked it. Cheers.